Hello. Hi. Good evening. Happy Sunday. We're here. Reach one. Here to reach you. Oh. Kiana Bates. And this is Phyllis Green. We're here to just share a topic with you that we thought was very important. Amen. Um, we were talking about guilt and unforgiveness and forgiveness and what that looks like for us. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about um, Tamar um, and uh, David's daughter and the rape of Tamar yeah. and um, how that created um, unforgiveness for her. And she was desolate um, in that whole process or after the fact, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were just having conversations about what that looked like. Yeah. And um, give us what give us what desolate means. Like, um, so according to my little a, couple, a few of my definitions that I, I was able to um, Google, um, desolate, desert of people, and in a state of bleak and dismal emptiness. So of course we're talking about a place at the point at this point, feeling or showing misery, unhappiness, or loneliness, making to feel um, utterly wretched and unhappy. And, it, and it's so many of us walking around like that um, in those places. And so while our whole body might not be desolate, we might be desolate in various areas. We can be desolate in our finances. We can be desolate in our love lives. We can be desolate um, in our character. Um, as of even, you know, or we can just simply be desolate, period. We, you know, just homeless. We just out of our mind. And that's where uh, Tamar went. She had um, actually lost her mind, and she was just desolate. So we're going to talk about Tamar and how she became desolate. And so for, um, for those that you know, don't, don't know who know Tamar story. is, she's a um, woman in the Bible that yeah. um, endured yeah. some, some things, yeah. you know, like a lot of us do. Yeah, she was, she was the daughter, the only daughter of King David. Um, and so Amnon, the oldest brother, um, or the oldest son of David, um, had an obsession with his sister, Tamar. And uh, Tamar and Absalom were the children of one of David's wives. And so Amnon had this obsession that he had to have his sister. She was beautiful. She was a virgin. Um, and he just felt like that she was the most beautiful thing on earth. And it was, she was, she was beautiful. And so in that she, she was a did you say that she was a virgin? virgin yeah okay i'm sorry and nope mm -hmm. you're good and mm -hmm. so in that she um he just had to have her and so you know he had somebody in his ear telling him the scheme of how he needed to go about um to get with his sister yeah. um and so he you know they concocted this scheme and 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 um tamar being obedient i'm sorry mm -hmm. tamar being obedient didn't have the expectation um, of this is what her brother would do to her. Amen. Um, and I, it's so it's something that um, you where, where you're speaking about Tamar and her brother and that situation. Just another example of God having a purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. God having she was a virgin. She was trying to do things the right way. Yeah. It's some things in this life that had that will happen to you that are beyond your control. Absolutely. It's stuff is it's not always us having situations because of some decisions we made. Some things were forced upon us. Absolutely. Some things we could not we had no say so yeah, in the matter. That's good. Absolutely. And that's a prime example. Absolutely. Because she was walking around doing what she was supposed to do. Absolutely. Being obedient. And the enemy was trying to come in and steal, kill, and destroy. Absolutely. It's been going on forever and it's still going on today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Um, had to sit there for a minute. I know. When he give me stuff, he just yeah. be like, man, God, you yeah. know, like, but, but just like he had Tamar then, he have us now. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, um, pain that, oh, that's such a good one. Mm -hmm. Pain. I, it's a song from Fred Hammond mm. where I love that part. Pain doesn't care where you live or who you are. Yeah. And so, and, and so real quick, I just, um, I sent this little screenshot to my daughter um, just yesterday, T.D. Jakes, um, from one of his previous messages. I believe it was um, Not For Sale mm -hmm. was the message. And it said, um, we have to stop looking at through things through our pain. Yeah. Um, because that yeah. keeps us desolate. 
And that's when you have a choice. Yes. That's when you yeah. have a choice. You choose yeah. to live through, you live your life in the lens of the pain Absolutely. or your power. Absolutely. Two P's. Yeah. I like that. Your pain or your power. Oh, that's good. Oh my God. Shirt. Yeah. Pain. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. you, it's a choice. We, we have choices. So, um, that that's good when we talk about Tamar and her being desolate. And, yeah. Um, we are we people we walking around desolate. Absolutely. We're going to work. We functioning. We driving, yeah. and we're in our routine because it's what we do every day. But we're yeah. desolate. We're not present. But how and how about this? So it also says in the scripture that after she was raped and she was even trying to reconcile our mm -hmm. word on the street. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Sesame Street. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was yeah. trying to reconcile what had even happened to her, you know, and she even asked her brother, you know, like, just marry me, you know, I'm sure dad would allow this to happen and um, um, for us to be married and just trying to make herself whole in this situation. And after he just like, you know, he didn't want nothing else to do with her. He kicked her out. You know, it says in there that she rent mm -hmm. her coat of royal colors. And so I'm thinking about how many of us are walking around because we have allowed shame yeah. and guilt to deprive us of the royal colors that God has bestowed upon us because we can't see past nothing else. Amen. And so I'm like, I'm right now, I'm like, I'm ready to walk in my royal colors, Amen. you know. <laughs> you um, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we but I, it's, a, it's another nugget in there. Yeah. So when you talk about Tamar wanting to fix it, she wanted to make it right. Mm. Man, how many times have we done that? How many times have we been in a situation even beyond our control? Yeah. And we try to fix it. We try yeah. to go before God like we talked about yeah. last time. Yeah. And we try to fix it because the pain is so unbearable. Yeah. And we want to make it right. We want to make it look a certain way. You know, yeah, I got pregnant mm -hmm. um, before, you know, mm -hmm. before marriage. I want to run and get married. That ain't going, mm -hmm. that ain't, that ain't marriage. Right. That ain't how, you know, that yeah. ain't the way God intended it. Or I just want to, you know, I, I broke this. I want to fix this or this happened and I want to fix that. But God had a plan. Yes, even in the did. midst of all that mess. Yes. He still was, God know who Tamar was. God knew she was a virgin. God knew that wasn't her choice. Yeah. Absolutely. And had she been able, and, and you know, and I know we're saying that this was different times and, you know, different cultures and all of that stuff. And I don't care. Unforgiveness and guilt and shame still has the same outcome. I don't care what still. culture, what time, yeah. whatever it is you're in. Mm -hmm. And we have to deal with those things yeah. so we can move forward in who he has called us to be. I think you were mentioning talking about Joseph. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, with with Joseph. Joseph was um he he was he he had birth, Joseph was chosen by God. Jo God had exposed to him a lot of times. If you think about people early on when you were, I remember being a child. God was he used to show me things. He yeah. used to show me the glimpses of my life and who I was going to be and yeah. what he wanted to do with me. Yeah. And um, this was the same thing with him. And what he did was he shared it. He shared it with his brothers and he shared it with the people that were supposed to be closest to him. Can't tell everybody everything. Exactly. Okay. But in all fairness, those are his brothers. And that's what we do a lot of times. Um, and, um, with, with, and that's where unforgiveness and disappointment and all that comes from is that we feel like because of the labels, because of the titles, you know, that these people have a certain, mm. um, what's the word? They, they have a certain obligation to us. They yeah. have a certain way yeah. that we feel like they should responsibility to us, to us yeah. because of a title and a name. Mm -hmm. And we put these people in a place that they don't belong. They're not yeah. God. They're human beings made yeah. from the same dust <laughs> we were made of with, yeah. the, you know, the same issues and, and all of that. So um, he, he expected, he had an expectation that I could share this with the people closest to me, yeah. the people that, you know, that, that were closest. And um, he couldn't. Yeah. And how many times we didn't been through that? Like, I know I should have told her that. You right. Know? So, Absolutely. <laughs> I was just happy. I was excited. <laughs> I wanted to share. You know, God is so good. Oh, you know, but everybody don't understand that. Right. You know, so they became jealous. They became jealous of what God, you know, the plans that God had for him. So they went to kill him. They like, we let's get rid of him. Yeah. Okay. Because I can't stand to watch him. You ever had somebody like that? Yeah. They can't stand to watch what God doing. I, I ain't going to be into that right, right. <laughs> i can't got people i can't they won't even call me they won't even you know what i'm saying like man what i do i just right. wanted, i love you yeah. and i just wanted you to know how good god is yeah, absolutely <laughs> and it hurt yeah. 
And so they threw away, they threw away with him and he went on this difficult journey. You know, he went to prison. He went, Absolutely. he went through a lot of different things. And, um, he came, when he came back, he could, <laughs> he was able to move forward because he understood that everything that transpired was still orchestrated by God. Absolutely. He still had his hand on him. It all had to happen. It had to be. Yes. Because without that, he wouldn't have became the great man that he, he became. Absolutely. He wouldn't, he, he, he wouldn't have had his story. Right. You got to have your story. You got to have your story. I need his story yeah. for my life. Yeah. And somebody need my story for their yeah, life. Like, absolutely. So he chose to forgive. Yes. He came home and he didn't. Yes. He, he treated his brothers well. And, um, he, and then when his father died... They thought he was going because he he took his father's position and they thought, man, he about to kill us. Yeah, <laughs> he been waiting on daddy to die so he can get us. Right. He was so in tune of what God done have did out of that mess yeah. that he had no thoughts about harming or hurting them. Absolutely. He moved forward and he forgave. Yeah. He he forgave. Yeah. And and that's what we have to do because and that's how you get to forgiveness is by mm -hmm. understanding that no matter what whoever wronged you. Whoever raped you, yes. whoever, whoever, whoever divorced, divorced you, you whoever, yeah, whoever, yeah, abandoned you, yo, you know, your children acting crazy, yeah. your boss letting you go, yeah, God got something else for you, yes. and when you understand that all of that is for the good yeah. of your your benefit, yeah. <laughs> Then yeah. you can move forward and forgive whoever left. Who you got to reconcile that? You have because to because so many lives are attached to your unforgiveness. Amen. Because you look at Joseph. Just think if he wasn't willing to forgive, how many lives, how many, how much blood he would have had on his hand? Amen. Because they were at a time where it was a famine. Yeah. And so he was able because he was so successful and prosperous where he was. Um, that he was able to feed his family Amen. and those to come. So it's so much Amen. we got to remember, guys, we're not in this just for us. Yeah. We are yeah. really called here to help each other, mm -hmm. to be a support, to be a light, to be mm -hmm. uh, um, a hope yeah. um, when, you know, there's it's desolation. Right. And, and that, that's why it's so big. People say it, and I know it's a it's, it's become just a, like a cliche, yeah. and, you know. But it, the forgiveness is for you. Yeah. Like if you only understood. Yeah. That and 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 we're not sitting here talking like forgiveness is easy. One, two, three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, still you, you know what I'm saying? I'm still working <laughs> on it. It's some folks that. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, but it is, it will free you. And not to say, and so, but the thing I think that we understand is that it's necessary. To and go, so, to move forward. Absolutely. And, and so now while we say we're still working on it, it's not saying that we are just not willing to do it. You know, it is a process and everything there is a process. We don't get to one thing to another overnight. Everything is a process. Yeah, and absolutely. so um, absolutely. how we got to that state of unforgiveness, we also have to allow that that process to take place to get to forgiveness. Amen. Um, and that's, I, you know, and I'm going to share um, because we all about on um, reach one is transparency mm -hmm. um, with me. I have a short fuse, mm -hmm. Real, you know, like I don't have the patience. Yeah, I don't have the patience yet yeah. that Amen. other people may have. Amen. And God is really working on me. And I will say that God has used my husband, Derek, in um in in, in, in things that has shown me when you when you really when you really see, see God, God. Mm -hmm. he will he will reveal, he will show you yourself. He yeah. will put a mirror up to you. He yeah. will use people to bring you out because he loves you so much. He don't want you stuck in the same spot year after year after year. Yeah. He wants your growth. Yeah. He he desperately needs your growth for his kingdom. Yeah. He that is important to him. And so with that, my husband, it, it's things that I've done. Like I said recently, I mismanaged some money. Yeah. And um I came to him like, oh, hey, you know, <laughs> hey boo. And you know, and, and the way he treated me Mm. He said, "Okay, well, we gonna do this, that, and the other, yeah. and then, 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 then." And I was like, "Oh, because if it was him, I'd have been like, you, 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 you <laughs> what? <Huh? laughs> oh, oh. You know?" And so I, I am still sitting here. It's been weeks. Yeah. I'm still sitting here in awe of the love that 
that he showed me, in yeah. the forgiveness that he yeah. showed, in the not beating the me up mercy. about, yes. you know what I'm saying? Something that's fixable. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, God will use people in your path to, to show you what forgiveness look like if you seek him, if you ask for it. Because yeah. I told him, show me, show me, you know, show me what that looked like. So, so you said something really important. And when we're talking about when you seek God and when you, you seek do. him earnestly. Yeah. So some of us are not ready yet. Some of us are not comfortable to deal with that because it can be uncomfortable when we're looking at ourselves in the mirror. So, you know, like when I look in the mirror, am I comfortable with who I see and what I do and what I am? And, and so a lot of people are just not ready to deal with that, but we, in order for us to be as powerful as God has ordained us to be, we have to do that. Yeah. Transparency and honesty is key. So what you're saying is you got to want it. You got to want it. You got to want, want, want it. I, I And I wish to. you could. I wish people that's watching could understand how detrimental yes, that is. You got to you, want it. You do. I, I mean, I'm 40. Mm -hmm. I, I had to want it one day. Yeah. Like, I've got, I'm in the same situation. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm waiting on taxes again this yeah, year. Right. I ain't got no more money. I can't wait to that tax. You know, I had to come out of that mentality. Like, you know, like, I want something different. Yeah. You know, so I had to seek him. And, Absolutely. you know, but and back on forgiveness, you know, um, and the guilt. most important and guilt. guilt. Yes. It, you got to forgive yourself. You absolutely You have do. to forgive yourself. Like, he already paid the price. Absolutely. The price is paid. Mm -hmm. The price is paid. Now, I'm not saying you go and you walk over people and you do things over and over again. Yeah. But you might do it a couple times. Yeah. You just And then you yeah. got to forgive yourself. Absolutely. You have to forgive yourself. Because we're not perfect. And we, we're not. We can't do what we don't know. Yeah. While we were born in sin, it still doesn't mean, uh, and, and, and how Jesus crucified the sin doesn't mean that we still continue to commit sin. Mm -hmm. And that's a growing learning process. Yeah, it is. I, my, when my nieces and nephews, me and my brother joke, and they be about to fall off something, I be like, let them know, you know, let them know life lesson. <laughs> You know how they gonna know not to get on that edge again. That's, <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> that's you gotta go through that. Yeah. You know, and you human. Give yourself permission to be human. Absolutely. God, gave, Jesus gave us that. Uh -huh. That's why He came down in a humanistic form to be on our level. So let me share something. You know, just um, just you know, when I'm thinking about my um, oldest son Corey, who was killed, and I, and it just conjured up some things because I was just talking to my daughter the other day, and it just dawned not just dawned on me, but it, it's just bringing to my remembrance that today was his birthday. Wow. You know, today was his birthday, and so my daughter, when I was talking to her a couple of days ago, you know, like she's stuck in this place, you know, and she's missing her brother like really bad, and it's been 12 years. Um, going on 12 years that he was killed. And so, you know, as we were talking and I'm trying to get to the root of all of this and she was saying, you're not listening to me. And, and so I'm, I'm trying to listen. I'm trying not to be frustrated in this process because we didn't, we didn't went around this mountain before, but nevertheless, she's sitting there and she's, so she started to say some things, you know, about what she had wanted to do and what she had offered to do to her brother. She felt like if she had done those things that he would still be here right now. And so she walking around with all of this guilt. Desolate. I never knew all of that. Desolate. desolate. Like seriously desolate. Yeah. Which she had no control over. Yeah. And so I'm trying to say, baby, look, you got to move forward. You can't stay stuck in this place. I said, because what's, what, what's been happening is when you're not dealing with that guilt and realizing that you had no control over it, I don't care what you had planned to do. We all have our days numbered. We do. Death is a certainty. It's and and I get it. Sometimes we can expedite the process with certain things that we do. But I done seen God do some miraculous things in people's lives. And you won't go until it's time for you to go. Mm -hmm. And so with that process, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get her to understand that you didn't have any control over that. Right. And you couldn't possibly had any control over that. Um, and, and that we got to move forward because I told her, I said, we talking, we talking. I said, cause look at here, we're going to mess around and be here the same time next year. You telling me the same story yeah. and I can't get down with that. Cause mm -hmm. 
we got to move forward. Yeah. You know, God got some things for you to do. God want to take your pain yeah. and turn it into power. Yeah. And he want her to talk about the loss of her brother. Absolutely. And what that did to her yeah. and how she picked up the, the pieces and she moved forward. Everything. Yes. It, it, everything is for his benefit. If you give it's him the glory, glory. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you know, that's yes. where it is. Nothing, yes. nothing you do. Should yeah. be not for his glory. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we, we got to quit looking at even those low moments, even those dark moments. Everything yeah. is for his glory. It's just how we look at it. Yeah. When you down and yeah. out and you feel in a certain way and, and you got that unforgiveness mm -hmm. going on, that's a, that's your that's your that's your sign to draw closer yeah to draw closer. absolutely when i'm feeling like that i put on word i put on some music I, yeah you know i i hear i hear from him go eat because that yeah man. i mean yeah. and i'm not saying food because lord let me uh, no, yeah. we're not talking about that i'm talking about it's plenty of Your podcasts word. with good word amen good word amen. go get it go, go get, get it. it and eat and yeah. let that minister to you amen amen because yeah. you are whatever you put in your body whether it's physical food or mental food that that's what that's what your body gonna feel like absolutely that's what if you if you eat some greasy burgers every day over mm. and over again you're not gonna feel good <laughs> if you listen to if you're watching all this crap on tv all the time absolutely. I, I i don't i'm not judging anybody on what they watch yeah, or what they I listen to <laughs> and i watch power <laughs> but that's a small portion of what i'm putting into absolutely. my body absolutely that's a small Absolutely. portion of what I'm putting into my mind yeah. and my spirit. Yeah. So I have to keep being recharged. Absolutely. Keep being recharged because we just because we sitting here talking about how good God is doesn't mean we don't battle. Absolutely. Doesn't mean that we're not struggling with forgiving certain people. Absolutely. Not doesn't mean that we're not struggling to forgive ourselves. Absolutely. Man. And it's a daily walk and a daily talk with ourselves, you know. Um, a lot of people used to say, oh, don't talk to yourself because that means you're crazy. You know, listen here. We talk to ourselves all the time yeah. and we tell ourselves negative crap yeah. all the time yeah. and we listen. And that's why we're in the state that we're in. So we need to change the dialogue. We need to change the monologue. We need Amen. to change that monologue and say what it is that we really are. Amen. You know, Amen. I am forgiven. Yeah. I have grace and mercy. And with that, I am able to forgive and I am able to extend mercy. So we have to remember those things. And those are the things we need to speak to ourselves. Amen. Yeah. Well, we thank you guys for tuning in. So, and so real quick. Because I have we one go, too. You go ahead. Okay. And so, um, you know, and even over the weekend, I was, um, I, you know, I had seen some things. And, I, you know, my heart is um, going out to the family of Bryce Gowdy. Um, and his mom, she did a podcast and she was just so distraught, you know, and, um, and her son, um, Bryce had commit suicide, committed suicide. And so with that, I just want, it's so many people that are hurting out here. And I just want to lift up this number of, um, the national suicide, uh, suicide prevention, prevention lifeline, lifeline. Mm -hmm. with that number. Um, if you know somebody or if you yourself need to call this number, just please do, you know, pain is curable, you know, and I know you say, yeah, with some things that's not, but it is, it's just all a matter and how you think about it. Mm -hmm. It's just all a matter how you use the work God has given you to, um, master that. And we can, cause we are who we, God says we are, mm -hmm. you know, mighty. Um, and so, um, I just want to put that up there and just remind people of there is a resource and there are people that are willing to listen and, um, don't let, uh, as T.D. Jakes put it, basically said, when people commit suicide, they kill their future. And it seems so obvious, but it's the truth. We allow ourselves to become the future dynamic people. That Amen. God has set for us to be. Amen. Um, Amen. And so, yeah. I just wanted to throw out a few. Um, I had saw this and I thought it was good um, in regards to forgive and how to forgive. Um, the first one would be to pray. Uh, Matthew 5 and 44. Love and do good to the offender. Mm -hmm. Man, I know that is the most difficult thing. <laughs> yeah. But that's what he called us to do. And that's in Romans 12 and 9. Yeah. Um, don't speak poorly of the offender. Yeah. Keep your mouth off of them. Absolutely. They still belong to God. Absolutely. That is, yes. that, that is Romans um, 12 and 14. 
release them from your punishment. Mm, Vengeance is mine. That's good. Said the Lord. Yeah. You don't have to put your hands on them. Yeah. God knows, and He take care of His. Amen. Um, don't celebrate their failures. Absolutely. Pray not. for them. Pray for them. Yeah. And that is um, Proverbs twenty four seventeen. Yeah. Um, treat them the way you want to be treated. Luke six and thirty one. Doesn't mean you gotta invite them over and have dinner with them. You know, yeah. but you can still have compassion. Absolutely. Um, and stop dwelling on the past. Yeah. Don't let the past hold you hostage. Amen. That's a good one. Isaiah 43, 18. Yeah. Acknowledge and reconcile. Wow. Acknowledge and reconcile. That's two good words right there. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless everybody. Have a fantastic week. <laughs>